Hello, my name is David Waltzman and I am a simulation product specialist for GoEngineer. In this video, I will be introducing SolidWorks Plastics Premium. SolidWorks Plastics comes in three levels, two of which are shown on this slide. Plastics Premium covers the fill and pack phase of the injection molding process. There are several key features in Plastics Premium that provide great information for the mechanical engineer, industrial designer, or a mold maker working on plastic parts. Plastics Premium offers all of the features from Plastics Professional with the addition of several key features. The first is modeling multi-cavity molds so we can see if the machine has sufficient injection pressure for multiple cavities to be filled at once. The second is an algorithm that allows SolidWorks to balance our runner system by varying the diameter of our sprue and runners so that family molds can fill in the same amount of time. The third is simulating the residual stress in our part as a function of cooling time. The fourth is showing where shrinkage and sink marks occur as a result of varying thickness and geometry. Finally, the ability to investigate the effect of placing inserts in the case of overmolding. Now let's take a look at some models in SolidWorks Plastics Premium. This first case here has a remote cover and we want to fill two of them at the same time in the mold. In order to do that, we have to add a sprue runner system to our model. In SolidWorks, the fastest way to do that is to create a 2D sketch here with our sprue and runner going to our mold cavities. When we go into plastics, we'll be defining this sketch with diameters so that the plastic can flow through it. So if we look at our results here, we can see how the diameters were defined and how it tapers off into the gates. And we can look to see how it fills. So the plastic starts through here, fills out. Both molds should be finishing at the same time because the length of the runners is symmetrical. All right, so this way we can look at the maximum injection pressure needed to, uh, to fill up our molds, the time that it takes altogether, and create a more accurate result for production. The next example I'd like to show is on runner balancing. All right, so here we have a mold with um, two family parts in it. So these parts will fit together. Uh, but since their geometry varies, it's going to take different amounts of time to fill our parts. So let's look at that. So we're filling up, we're watching it. It's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like this one's filling up faster. If we flip it over, we have a clearer view here. See that one fills up and then that one catches up. So in SolidWorks, we can choose to have the software do the runner balancing for us. So it's going to be varying those diameters and working for about an hour on this model until it figured out what the optimal design was for our system. All right, so here if we look at our results, we see that it's filling up and slowing down and they're about the same now. So again, I didn't need any deep industry knowledge to, to figure that out. I'm letting the software work intelligently to optimize my design and let me get back to doing um, what I love most. All right. Next, let's check out some um, sink marks and shrinkage. So here we have a cover uh, for a tool here. And if we look at our results, we can see you know, our fill as usual. But what I'm what I'm interested in this time, see we have our gate location right here. So it's filling up our mold, no problem. But I have a lot of ribs in this design and I'm curious if that's going to be pulling in any of the materials on my shell. So if we look at our sink marks, we can see the effects of all of our ribs pulling in our part. So again, this is added material on the back. It's cooling at a different rate. And we can see if we flip this over that our rib here is about 70% thinner than this rib over here. All right, so when we look at the amount of sink, 
it's quite significant. So we'd want to take out our designer's handbook and make sure that the radii and the thickness of our ribs is appropriate. Lastly, let's go over an example with inserts. So here in brown, I have my mold, my cavity, that is going to be filling with plastic. And then in gray, I have some inserts, which I'm going to identify as copper in my simulation. And I'm going to have the plastic flow around these leads to create my connector. So we can see our fill as usual. Once we're modeling the fill, notice that our inserts are now in wireframe because plastic is not filling those areas. Right. Another great uh, post-processing technique that we have is to look at isosurfaces. So this is showing volumes. You see all the triangles here. That's our solid mesh that we had in this model that allows this to be done. So instead of just modeling the shells, we're modeling it as a solid. I think this is this is great to watch. We also have these clipping planes that we could look at. So here I've made two planes on here, a vertical one and a horizontal. So we can see at those regions what the filling looks like. On our packing results, I can do a quick verification to make sure that this was filled correctly with the inserts all correctly identified with the appropriate domains by looking at the frozen area post filling. So by doing this we see that all the plastic filled with ease and then we have these red areas for all of our inserts. So that makes sense because our metal isn't liquid here it's always in the solid state so here we have a cl clear division of our domains. So as demonstrated in the last several models, we investigated multi-cavity molds, runner balancing with family molds, the effects of shrinkage and sink marks, as well as overmolding and how plastic flows over our metal inserts. Thank you for watching. This has been David Waltzman with Go Engineer. I hope you enjoyed this video.